ways. Um, and for anybody who's watching it, uh, what did we miss in the last minute? M my students couldn't think of many examples. Uh, what else do we have? Um, okay, so let's go back to the spring. Describe to me, if I have a spring and uh, it's moving left and right, what happens if, I, if, if, I, if the spring is pulled out more? Uh, what happens to the force in the spring? Is it more or is it less? What do you think? Like, picture a spring and picture it being pulled out. Do you get more or less force? More. more. So if if the spring is moving out this way, so this is the displacement, yeah. Which way is the force? Well, the force is obviously this way. And if you have more displacement, you have more force. So if the displacement is x and the force is f we say that x is proportional to f. You know, if you, have, if you have twice the x, then you get twice the force. Yeah? But not only is it proportional, it's also opposite. So it's actually like there's a minus here as well. It's in the other direction. So that's what I mean by proportional. You make it bigger, you get more force. And then that's what I mean by opposite. So you don't have to use my exact words in the exam. But in the exam, this question would be two marks. And you get the first mark for mentioning the proportional, and the second mark for mentioning the opposite. And that's how it would go. So I would like you to copy this definition down. Okay, Kim? What's so funny? Ah, no, you must be thinking of a dirty joke. Tell me your dirty joke. What's so funny? No, okay. No joke? Okay. Right. Uh, continue? Yeah? Okay. So, um, I want us to try and imagine what the graph might look like, the velocity time graph. So um, you have the spring, you pull it out, and then you let go. Let's try and figure this out together. Okay, so you pull out, you hold it there, and then you let go. So at the very beginning, what would you say the velocity is? Like, is it big? Is it it's zero. Okay. Yeah? Now, what happens next? Yeah, so what happens with the velocity? Well, I mean, is it bigger? Is it smaller? Like, what? what? So what way should I draw this? Yeah, although if it's going down, the velocity is yeah. negative. So it gets bigger and bigger. The spring goes down. And then what happens to the spring at the bottom? It stops. And then what happens? bounces so the velocity goes back up. So how should I draw this graph? What, what graph should I draw here? Yeah, like maybe maybe something like this. Yeah. So if we have a look, this is what we get if we were to look at the velocity time graph. Um, this, it gets faster, slower, faster, slower. Now do you see at these moments here, this represents when the spring is stopped. When does that happen? Well, if you think about the spring, that happens at two points. 
when the spring is all the way at the bottom, it stops, and then when it's all the way at the top, it stops and then comes back down. So all these times here is when it, it's hit the top or the bottom. Okay. Uh, I think this is a good graph for you to draw in your notebook. Okay, you drew that? Yeah? Okay. Now, um, in simple harmonic motion, just like with circular motion, we have some terms. So, for example, in circular motion, we had things like frequency, angular velocity, periodic time. So, let's see what terms we need for simple harmonic motion. So, the first one is F. Uh, and t. So these are so far the same. And omega. Okay, so these are the same. But we have some new ones. Uh, and by the way, these all mean the same thing. So frequency, do you remember, it means how many in one second? It's the same for simple harmonic motion, how many in one second. And uh, the, the t, what was the t? Time. So again, it's the time for one cycle. The omega means it's something a little bit different though, which we kind of need a different picture to explain. It's, it's still an angular velocity, but you might say, well, how could it be an angle? Because there's no angle, so we'll get to that one later. Um, so, what, what I, well, I guess we'll get to it now, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. So, what does the omega mean exactly? I tried to explain with this picture here. So, what type of motion is this? It's circular. Okay. So does this have an omega? Yeah, the, the angular velocity. Now, what type of motion is this? Simple harmonic motion. So when we say the simple harmonic motion has an omega, we need to imagine we could connect the motion to a circle. The omega that this has will be the same as the omega that this has. There is another way to think about it, which my teacher explained to me in high school. So imagine you had um, a wall, and here you had a table, like a record, and on it you put a little candle, and the candle has a little flame on it. So this makes a shadow on the wall. As this turns around, it has an omega. What will this little shadow do on the wall? Well, it will go left and right, won't it? You can picture that. So the omega that we say this has is the same omega that this has. So when we talk about the omega in the simple harmonic motion, it's like saying that's the omega it would have if it was connected to a circle. That's kind of the idea behind it. Um, there's also a nice little animation that would help you if you want to look it up later. You can get it from this video. Okay, so anyway, that's what's the same. So I want you to write down F, T and Omega are the same. But now let's look at the new ones. Got that? F, T, Omega are the same. Right, so, some vocabulary first. Equilibrium, also called the origin. This is where the, the center of the motion is. So, for example, imagine I have a spring like this. Okay, so it's going from here to here. Okay, the equilibrium would be like here. Because that, that, that's, that's the center of the motion. 
So equilibrium means center of motion. Uh, does anyone know this word, amplitude? Anyone know amplitude? Kim, you know it? Are you sure? Uh, it looks like you know it. No? Siva? Yeah, yeah, it's like the height. It's the, it's the maximum displacement. Uh, or as you said, the height. Right. Well, you all know what velocity is, obviously. And you, we know what this is. We said it's the same. And we know what this is. And we know what this is. So, there's only really two new words. Got that? Yeah? Okay. Now, um, we need to talk about the energy of the motion. So, when the spring is at rest, it has no kinetic energy, obviously. It has only potential energy. As it starts to move, what happens to the kinetic energy? Well, it increases, because it starts to move faster and faster. So what must happen to the potential energy? If the, if, if the kinetic energy is going up, then what must happen to the potential energy? Um, it's going down. Because the total energy needs to be the same. When it's at the origin, it has no potential energy and has only kinetic energy. Uh, because this is when it's traveling the fastest. So I want to show you what the graph looks like for the energy. I'm trying to explain this for you, okay? Here is the origin and here is the displacement. So if this is the origin, here x is zero, okay? And then you have one centimeter, two centimeters, three centimeters, stops, three, two, one, minus one, minus two, minus three. So it's going like this, okay? When is the when is it going the fastest? Or I should say, when is it not moving? So in my example, we have 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0. So when is it not moving? When is it speed 0? Minus 3 and 3. Minus 3 and 3. So, that's why when you look at the kinetic energy, it's 0 here and here. But then it gets bigger. When is it biggest? At the origin. So when it's moving like this, when is it going fastest? Here in the middle. But because the kinetic energy goes like this, it means the potential energy must be the opposite. Because when the kinetic energy is low, the potential needs to be high. And when the kinetic is high, the potential needs to be low. So this is what the potential energy looks like. Because when you add the two together, you should get a constant total energy. Okay. This graph uh, is very common for them to ask you to draw this in the exam. So they want to see kinetic, potential, and total on the graph. Okay? So I need you to copy this in your notebook. <coughs>
total energy. Can you make a, a few speakers? I don't think I can. <laughs> but I might be able to open the picture up separately. Uh, 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 maybe it's this one? No. Maybe it's this one. No. Um, maybe... Ah, this one. Four. Okay. Zoom in. I hope you can all see that. Okay, continue, Joe, or you need a minute. Okay, right. Now, this is the graph. We, we did the velocity graph, but this is actually the graph for displacement, velocity, and acceleration. Uh, uh, S, B, and A. And what do you notice about these graphs? They're all really the same shape, aren't they? So, uh, displacement goes positive, negative, positive, negative. Velocity, you know, fast slower, positive, negative, positive, negative, and so will acceleration. Acceleration increases positive, negative, positive, negative. So everything about simple harmonic motion is like this. The V, the A, the X, uh, it's all of this shape. Uh, by the way, actually, maybe somebody knows this. Uh, what type of graph is this? Where do you see this in maths? What's, what shape is this? Yeah, yeah, uh, and more precisely, it's like sine and cos graphs, the periodic graphs, yeah. Um, I would like you to add these. So which graph did you do for me already? You did the middle one, but they're all kind of the same. So uh, could you... No, I don't think you need to copy this down. That's okay. Right, now, important slide. On to the formulas. So some formulas are the same. T is still equal to 1 over S. T is still equal to 2 pi over omega. Oh no, that's a new one, is it? Or did I give you that one already? That's a new one. Okay. Ah, oh, okay, okay. That's a, this is a new one then. So T is uh, the total energy? T is the total time. Total time. Yeah. Uh, next one, number three. Now this one is the formula for the acceleration. So for the circle, what was it? V squared over R. For the simple harmonic motion, it's minus omega squared S. S for displacement. I'm sorry, I sometimes say S and sometimes say X. It's the same thing. So when the S is big, the acceleration is big. And when the S is small, the acceleration is small. And when does it have no acceleration? When it's at the slope of the maximum. No, actually. Because have a look at the formula. How would you make A zero? What value of S? Zero. zero. So what part of the motion is that? Zero. Yeah. Here. How would that position be? It is. Yeah, but like it's going up. 
Correct, but it's not going any faster. Okay. So what's happening is, it's going faster and faster and faster. It reaches its maximum speed, has no more acceleration. It's not going to increase more. And then when it passes this point, it starts to decrease. Yeah. Uh, question? All these decisions can be cool. Yeah, but they are too difficult for us to prove in this class. Oh, but this equation can be proved by uh, this equation. This equation can be proved from the definition I gave you. You know that force is proportional to. Yeah. Uh, the proof requires a little bit of mathematics that you haven't done yet in class. It requires some calculus derivatives. Next formula. S equals A sine omega T. If starting from equilibrium, otherwise it's cos. So for example, uh, if the motion begins here, then the S you can find is A sine omega T. Now, if the motion begins here, at the top, then it's A cos omega t. Okay? So you have two formulas dependent on where the motion begins. And what's A? Ah, did I not tell you where I thought I said that? It's amplitude. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, maybe I didn't actually say it. A is amplitude. Kind of. Remember we said if you could make the simple harmonic motion into a circle, it would be like that angle, your angular velocity. So T is logarithm. Which T? Oh no it is. It's sine if you want bracket omega T bracket. Yeah. Continue. Next one. Now the next one is for velocity, and it's A omega cos omega t, it starts from equilibrium, otherwise it is minus sine. Continue. Yeah? So, yeah, there's more formulas in this than the last lesson. So, the next one is a formula for B, uh, and it's plus or minus omega root a squared minus s squared. Now, the reason for the plus and minus is because the formula can't tell you if it's heading right or left. You know, the formula can't tell you that. You have to decide yourself which it is. Okay, continue. Yeah. Now, this is the formula for potential energy. It's a half m omega squared f squared. And uh, that, that's the last one for there. You look very unhappy with this. What is it be? Amplitude. Um, so when, when it's moving like this, mm -hmm. the A is the biggest. It's like the height. Mm -hmm. So that's the A. Oh, yeah. The height. Uh, yeah, like the biggest height. The biggest height. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, go ahead, yeah. Uh, continue. You got this? Yeah. Right. <coughs> In the real world, if I have a spring and I pull the spring and let go, what will it do? It will go like this. Will it do this forever? No. no. What will happen, Antex? It will 
It would slow down and stop. So the motion is more like this. <coughs> uh, we call that motion <coughs> damp motion. So in the real world, it looks more like this, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> This is called dampen. Um, hand me that uh, ruler there, please, uh, uh, Matt. I see. I think I. Can oh no, this is useless. I need a. <laughs> So we could get some damp motion here. There we go. Real life damping. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Continue. Continue? Yep. Right. This one now is called the forced harmonic oscillator. So just, just to explain in the picture, okay? Imagine this guy is not moving, okay? So this one is not moving, it's fixed. And somebody pushes this and it starts to move left and right, left and right, left and right. Fine. We want to think or study what is the effect this one would have on this one? Okay, so he's moving, he's happy, left, right, left, right, left, right. And then I start to move this one, left, right, left, right. I think we all understand that there will be some effect on moving this on this. Okay, so uh, the question is now, I want to know I want this guy to move out more, okay? So maybe right now he's going like this. But I would like him to move out a bigger distance. So my question is, what should I do to this big X to make the small X bigger? So how could I move him to make this one move out more? So how can this affect this? So what do you think? How could I move this one? In what way should I move this one to make this one go sort of more uh, extreme? What would you think? Yeah, but in what way? Like, should I move it fast? Should I move it slow? Should I move it far? Like, how should I move the big X to affect the small X and make the small X move more and more further, further out? Yeah, but like, describe to me, like, you grab it, what would you do to it? Yeah, but I mean, would you just push it once, or, yeah, but would, would you move it fast or slow, like, yeah, like, I think most people would think you should grab this, grab it, and then push it really hard, and if you want to, this to move more, then what should you do here? Push it harder, yeah? Push or push further, yeah, push further, okay? This is all wrong. This actually, it's interesting because that is not how you make this one move more. You know, people would think, oh, just push the big one hard and fast and it'll make the small one move more. It's not actually what happens. Um, the F, the omega, and the T does not change when it's forced. Uh, only the A changes. And how does the A change? This is the question. If you want to make this amplitude bigger, you don't make this amplitude bigger. Instead, what you do, well, I'll explain the graph in a moment, you move this at the same rate as you move this. Okay? So imagine he has a frequency of 2. 
What does that mean? It means every second how much does he move? Twice. So it goes one, two. If you do the same thing with this one, one, two, then you make him move more. And if you move this faster, so maybe its frequency is three, one, two, three, will this move more or less? It'll actually move less. Now that might be difficult to, be, to believe. Because you think, oh, if I move this at a frequency of 10, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, you would think that this one would move, like, it would start going crazy. It doesn't. To have the most effect, you should match the frequency with this frequency. Match the omega with this omega. Match the T with this T. We need to match them. When the frequency matches the frequency here, this is when you get the most amplitude. If you do it too fast, you get less. Or too slow, you get less. Now you actually know this already, but you don't know you know this. And I'll tell you how you know this. So you know, with the, um, with the opera singer, um, she sings, and the glass breaks. Oh yeah, could you get that? Thank you, Anza. Okay, so as I was saying, the opera singer, she sings and the glass breaks. Why does the glass break? It's not because she's singing very loudly. It's the frequency. The frequency of her voice matches the frequency that the atoms are moving at. When you match the outside frequency with the inside frequency, like here, if you match the outside frequency with the inside frequency, you make the smaller thing move more. So what happens if the little atoms start to move more? Well, then the glass will break. That really happens? That's what happens, yeah. So the, the opera singer breaks the glass because her voice frequency matches the frequency of the vibrating atoms. That's why the glass breaks. It's a matching exercise. Yeah. So that's why I said you already knew this. You just didn't know that you knew this. Yeah. Um, there is a very famous example of this, which you, you, you might know. It's the example with the bridge. Okay. So uh, I can't uh, Where was it? Flip. It was in America, but I don't remember where. So there was a really... I don't know if it was San Francisco. Yeah, you know the one I'm talking about. No, 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 no. It's like it, but it's a one that collapsed. So this bridge has a frequency, doesn't it? Like it, 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 it. You, you can't really see it, but it's moving a little bit, right? Like when you think about a bridge, you think that it's not moving, but really it's moving a little bit. You know, it's going left and right, left and right. Now, you have a wind. And the wind blows the bridge, but it's no big deal because the bridge is really strong. Well, it is a big deal if the frequency of the wind matches the frequency of the bridge. So you get the same effect as this. So then what happens is the bridge starts to shake more. And then you start, oh, actually, my bridge is actually moving. Oh, I know, it's actually moving more. And then eventually uh, the bridge collapses. Okay? So, you know, this is actually this is a, a, a real thing that's a real problem. Uh, and this is called forced oscillator. And I need you to draw both of these pictures. Are you at the end of your first physics notebook? Yeah. Exciting. You almost got all of mechanics into it. Yeah. Almost. almost, but not quite. Both, both. Basically, including the basically everything, the text as well, everything.
Yeah, yeah, you know how this works, don't you? It, it, it's, it's not absolutely necessary to write it down. The picture is good enough. Yeah, it, 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 what I'm saying, what the picture is saying is that there's some frequency, which we'll just call it F0, where if you get it, you get the most effect. And if you go past it, you get less amplitude. And if you're before it, you get less amplitude. Wrong. Oh, while you were gone, I was trying to use your ruler for a demonstration, but it was useless. It's not. It w uh, it's too flexible. Yeah. What was this name? Damp. D A M P. D A M P. Yeah. Damp. We were waiting for the two of you, yeah, okay. What time did you go to sleep at, Siva? 9 p.m.? You look exhausted, though. What time did you wake up at? 7. Alright, that was a good sleep. That was a good sleep. No. You should be full of energy. That's like twice as long as uh, Kim sleeps for. <laughs> Maybe three times longer than what she sleeps for. Now you're going to walk to school today. I walk today, yeah. Oh. Is it? I walked because I couldn't cycle with m carrying my costume bag, so I walked from the train station. Yeah. Why, did you see me? Okay. It's the first time you walked? Huh? Um, my house. How far away is it? An hour. Oh, that's close. Where is your house? I'm um, Brian Gorman. Dublin 7. Dublin 7? This is Dublin 8. You only moved one Dublin number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Half an hour? Okay. So, you must have been hungry when you got here then. <laughs> Did you have breakfast before you left? You have anything to eat today? Yeah. Oh yeah, sorry, yeah, you had your cookie, I forgot, yeah. Uh, okay, do you have this now, George? Mm -hmm. Yep, alright. <sighs> so finally, after all that, we're ready to look at some questions. Um, so, a boy pulls at a spring, he pulls it down five centimetres and let's go. The spring oscillates. Okay. Right, what what is that five centimeters? Which letter is that? So have have a look at all the formulas. Which letter represents that five centimeters? Amplitude. Amplitude, the big A. Right, the spring begins to vibrate. It takes half a second for the spring to complete one oscillation. Right, so what's that zero point five then? The T, yeah. I think you can do this one without my help. I want the omega first. So tell me the omega. What formula can give you the omega?
That could give you the omega, couldn't it? Yeah, so calculate it for me, please. What do you mean? Oh, yes. Yeah. This is a classic Stephen trick to uh, make you change the units. You should know be mine by now. What did you get, Siva? Yeah? What did you get, uh, Matt? 12.5. 6? 12. 12.56. 12.56. Okay, good, good. Now, I want you to tell me what formula I can use to get the second part. How fast is the spring moving after one second? Oh no, that's for the A. I'm looking for how fast. So what le Okay, so firstly, what letter do I want? How fast? Uh, B. No, no, B. Yeah. How fast? Uh, B, B, yeah? But what formula will give me the B? Uh, now wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Think about what you know. What did I tell you? How fast the spring is moving after one second. Yeah, so now tell me which formula. We equals plus minus W? No. no. Yeah, it's... I'll go back to show you. It's... Must be this one. A omega cos omega t. Do you know omega? Yes. Do you know amplitude? Yeah. <coughs> Do you know the small time? <coughs> yeah, what is it? One second. Wait, no, don't calculate yet. No, listen, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Yes. So, we know A. Yes? What is it? 0 0.05. We know omega. What's omega? 12.56. We know the T. It's one second. Now, the question is, do I use cos or do I use minus sign? Now, what did the boy do? He pulled it, he let go. So, is it starting from the center, or is it starting from the, uh, the top? The top. So, should I use cos or minus sign? Okay, calculate for me. And your calculator must be in radiant mode. The same as last class. Radiant per second. Oh, you haven't done this in maths? No, you wouldn't have. Uh, shift I mean, mode rad. Shift. Yeah, I, um, yesterday when we were talking about circular motion, I said we have to use radians, not degrees. Your calculator needs to be in radian mode. Now, it didn't matter yesterday because we weren't using sine and cos, but here we are using sine and cos, so we need to tell the calc. We need to tell the calculator that this is in radians, not degrees. Because remember we said omega is radians per second. So we're telling the calculator to use radians, not degrees. Uh, so uh, tell me what answer you get.
What answer do you get? It's the money time, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's a tough calculator to have. Who has an answer for me? Yeah, why can't we use the plus minus one? Let's see. This one here. The reason we can't is uh, although we know the omega and the a, we don't know the s. So after uh, after one second, we don't know the s. Yeah. Uh, okay. What answer did you get? No, I'll give me three. Yeah, to round it off, what would it be? It's basically zero, wouldn't it? Yeah, meters per second. So basically zero. Now. You, yeah, <laughs> minus, but it's just zero. You knew that it should have been zero. If you really think about it, look, it starts here. How long until it gets back to the start? What's the, the periodic time? I think we said zero point, oh, there, zero point five. Okay, so look, zero point five is here. Then another 0 0.5, where is it? Back at the top. What's the speed when it's at the top? So you you knew it was... No, I was making a point. No, no, but like, let's say if we do that in the exam, we can just... Oh, in the exam, we wait for time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can just put zero and We could. Uh, yeah, because you, you, could, you could just simply say, you know, it's uh, uh, back at the amplitude. No. In fact, to be honest, I don't even think you need to explain because it's, it's obvious enough once you see it. You know, if it's half a second per period and you're asking for where it is one second later, you're asking where it is after two periods, which is back at the start. So, um, if this was an exam question, it'd be a one mark question because it doesn't require any work. It's just like, there's the answer. Yeah. You know. It's sneaky of me. But you've learned something now. Uh, okay, continue. Uh, next one. And again, I think we'll, we'll do this one together. So, this one is a molecule. You all know what a molecule is from chemistry. And it's vibrating. Now, it's vibrating very fast. Uh, the frequency is 1420 megahertz. How big is a mega? 10 to what power? 6. Yeah, uh, nine is. Nine gigas. What did you say? Nine. I know that's minus nine. Giga, giga. Yeah. So that means in one second, how many times does the molecule uh, oscillate? It would be about one billion times. Billion. So I think we agree the molecule is moving quite fast. True. Um, the amplitude is quite small. Why is the amplitude quite small? Well, it's a molecule, so it's not moving very far. So the amplitude is 10 to the minus 15 meters. It's quite small. Right. What formula gives me the omega? T equals 2 pi over omega. Ah, but we don't know the T. So we'd have to get the T. How would we get the T? 1 over F, yeah, okay. So can you calculate the omega for me? See what we get. Okay, what's the omega? Did you get the omega? What is this? I think it should be a big number. Yeah, yeah what is it? 
Should be a pretty big number, won't you guys? Eight, nine, two, four, nine, seven, nine, three, two. Uh, can your calculator easily convert that into 10 and a power? Okay, oh, that's okay. What, what did we get? Oh, yeah. What did you get? Eight, nine, six, seven, okay. But is your calculator not giving it to you in a nice form? No. Okay, fine. Okay. So we can copy that down. Um, now, the next part. What is the maximum velocity? Maximum velocity. So tell me, which formula do you think can give me that? Which can tell me the maximum velocity? Well, which ones firstly can tell me the velocities? Number five and number six. Can I use number five? Mm. No, because do I, I don't know the time when the maximum happens. Can I use number six? What do you think? Can I do use number six? Now tell me, in number five, I need to know the time. In number six, what would I need to know? The S. Now, do we know where the maximum velocity happens? Mm. Yeah, mm. at the equilibrium. And what's the S there? Yeah. So what's the formula for the maximum? It's omega square root A squared. But what's the square root of A squared? A. a. So the answer is simply omega A. Do you know the omega? You do, you just got it. Do you know the amplitude? You do, I gave it to you. So, give me the uh, velocity now. Omega A is the answer. So what's omega A? Yeah, times minus five, yeah, yeah. Well, because I said maximum, we'll take the plus. Are you okay with that? Okay. Uh, that's a good job with that, because usually students get a little bit confused on that one. They don't really, un they don't quite see at first that the F needs to be zero. Uh, so either you're smarter, or I did a better job this year of explaining or boat. Right, uh, now last one. What is the maximum acceleration? So, let's go back. Which formula gives me the maximum, or which formula gives me the acceleration? There's only one. Which one? Number, which number? Okay. Third one, yeah. <coughs> Do we know what the S is for the maximum acceleration? Have a look at this formula. We know the omega, but do we know the S? We want to make the A a maximum. What's the S? The S is the maximum, yeah. Because the way to make A maximum is to make S maximum. But what do we call the maximum S? Amplitude. So the maximum acceleration is simply omega squared a, amplitude a. Do you know omega? Yeah. Do you know the amplitude? Yeah. So can you get the maximum acceleration? Yeah. So omega squared multiplied by a, please. Omega squared multiplied by a.
is a big number. So omega squared will be a big number. So even after you multiply by a, I think you should actually get a big number. Yeah, that's pretty big. Yeah. Did you get that, Siva? Omega squared times a? Yeah. Okay, continue. Yes? One example left. And then we finish. Right, I'll do this one because it's a little bit harder than the last two. In the last two, um, in the last two examples, you were just using the formulas. So not, not very interesting. Uh, this one here, you have to think a little bit. A car shock absorber. Does anybody know what that is? Should be apostrophe on my S. I'm sorry. A car's shock shock absorber. Does anyone know what the shock absorber is? Do you know what it is? Yeah. Like how? Yeah. Say again. Yeah. Ah, that's yeah, that's yeah, that is a shock absorber, but we call that one a bumper. There is another shock absorber, not at the front or at the back, uh, the one that supports the car. So you know, underneath the car, you have these four big springs. Now, what is the purpose of these big springs? It's the same on bicycles. You know, you sometimes have a spring on the bicycle. Why do cars and 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 bicycles have these big springs? For the bumps on the road, it, 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 it makes it a little bit smoother, yeah? So your car has a mass of 2,000, and then what happens is it hits a bump on the road. So you know, when you're in the car and you hit a bump on the road, what happens to the car? You know, it goes up and down, yeah? Um, so I tell you the frequency is 2. So you hit the bump, you go bump, and the car moves twice in one second. So it goes bump, and it goes like that in one second, okay? And the spring compresses by one centimeter, so it goes one centimeter. How much energy is in the spring? So you know, you have the spring and you compress it. There's energy in this because if you let go, what happens? The spring goes. Whoop. So um, I want to know how much energy is stored. So I gave you the formula for potential energy. What is it? Potential energy in the spring equals what? A half m What's next? Omega squared Omega squared S, S which in this case is 0 0.01 It compresses this much, that's the S Okay, do we know the omega? No Oh, oh this is squared as well, sorry do we know the omega? No. But we can say omega equals 2 pi over t. Do we know the t? Do we know the t? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 1 over f. So that's 2 pi over a half. So that's 4 pi. Right. Can you just hit that in on the calculator and then we're finished for today? How much energy is stored in the springs of the car? big or small number? Do you think there's lots or little energy stored in a car's spring when it hits a speed bump? Mm -hmm. Have you seen these springs? They're pretty big springs. I think it should be a, a big enough number. 15.7? Ah, that's not that impressive. 15.7 joules? Yeah? Is that what you got? 15.7. Ah. Can't really do much with 15 joules. You could light an LED light bulb for about six seconds. Not too impressive. Now, um, if the car was a bigger mass, would that make more or less energy stored? Make more. And again, that makes sense. If a big car hits a speed bump, then that will put more energy into the springs, you know, because the, the springs have to support a bigger mass. 
So they're holding in more energy from the bump. Um, okay. I, I'm happy that we got that finished because I actually thought it was going to be a double lesson, but we actually got it all covered. So that means there's only one topic left in mechanics. Uh, we'll get that finished on Monday. Then on Thursday we'll start the next section. And then we'll have a tutorial on Friday. But if you like, we can make the tutorial on Friday next week a double tutorial because we could do exam preparation. Mm -hmm. So if you want, we could have a look at some uh, some exam questions from NCUK or you know do something like this. Okay.